I never really was that big into the Scream franchise until recently when I went back and watched all four, had myself a fun time. The master of horror, Wes Craven, crafted some very slick and creative flicks here. Today, I'm gonna rank them all. It's the best and worst of Scream on Movie Fuse. managed to bring back almost every single key player except for the one that mattered, Kevin Williamson. The Dawson's Creek writer's sharp dialogue was definitely missing this go around and some of the key players were downright different, especially Dewey and Gale. The Scream franchise has always done a great job bringing on stellar cameos and this one's no exception. Carrie Fisher gets the gold star for the best segment in the flick and watching Jenny McCarthy get brutally stabbed multiple times, that wasn't too bad either. What was bad, however, was Parker Posey's performance. Just chewing through scene after scene with her over-the-top performance. This movie is far more cartoonish than the others with very little thrills to be had. The only scare in this picture comes from Courtney Cox's hairdo. That thing is just hell. It has some of the dumbest moments in the franchise, such as a printer choreographing plot points right before a house goes up in flames. Mm. An explosion that Michael Bay could touch himself to repeatedly. The killer's voice box was another stupid element. This magical device lets him sound like anyone he's conveniently needed to. Speaking of the killer, he's basically a real ghost this time around. Popping up left and right like Houdini. He's upstairs, he's downstairs, he's outside, he's inside. Just matter of seconds shit here. The only highlight for me was the final fight with Sydney. It was nice to see her kick a little ass for once. Granted, she was basically shoehorned into this movie, disappearing for large chunks. Bottom line, I didn't really like this one. I'm sure I'll be in the minority on this one, but I thought Scream 1 was just an okay film. At some points it's self-aware, but at others the characters just seem really dumb and fall in line with every other horror movie cliché. The opening scene is a classic for sure, but after that there's not much to enjoy until the final act. It also throws me for a loop every time I hear Hans Zimmer's composition from Broken Arrow repurposed in a Scream as Dewey's theme song. How dare they! Broken Arrow is a treasure, it is a masterpiece, I love it! Sorry I blew up. The actors are all likable, which is a rarity in a scary flick, and the rules set forth by Jamie Kennedy, no less, are spot on. The two killer concept was a cool spin on things as well, especially when one of them's shaggy from the live action Scooby-Doo movies. Zoinks! Looks like we're gonna have to shiv this fucker, Scoob! <laughs> scooby doo -be doo and if you don't like the movie, just get to the garage door sequence with Rose McGowan and pause it there. And just look at her, and appreciate her, admire her, it's really all you need. Is Rose McGowan. All bets are off in Scream 2 and they even put some main cast members in body bags. Well, one of them comes back alive at the end, but still. The college campus made for some very unique murders and I'm guessing the TV series Scream Queens took some inspiration from this. Hell, the main lead from Scream 4 is in it, so I'm sure they took some notice. The series tends to go a bit silly at times, but here they nailed the tone jumping between light humor and dark situations flawlessly. If this whole damn series wasn't so obsessed with itself, I'd say start at number two here. This was the only Scream movie where the villains were pretty telegraphed for me, but it didn't matter. I enjoyed the reveals just as much regardless. It's one of those rare touchstones in cinema where the second movie not only lives up to the first, but exceeds it. Scream 4 does not get the credit it deserves, nor did it put up those impressive box office numbers. It's just as creative, arguably more so than the rest, with one of the best cast lineups in the series. The first 15 minutes is brilliant, giving us a double dose of fakeouts. All the movies are self-referential, but this one takes meta to the extreme and even comes up with a more creative set of rules for reboots and remakes, which is just brilliant. And the ending has my favorite line in Scream when Cindy turns to the killer and says, You forgot about the first rule of remakes. <laughs> Don't fuck with the original, mic drop. It was nice to see all the fan favorites return, although Courtney Cox is looking pretty Caitlyn Jenner in the face, probably due to all the Botox and surgery going on in Hollywood. I am glad they took one more stab at the franchise, pun intended, and this one ends on a much sharper note. Also, pun there too. The first Scream movie will probably be number one on a lot of people's lists, which is fair since the sequels kind of require you to watch it. What it does is set up a very cool premise full of inside jokes, clever dialogue, twisted villains, and plenty of knifing. I have a newfound appreciation for this franchise and will continue to revisit in the Halloweens to come. Now I want you to play a little game, Sydney. Sorry, I can't do the voice I tried. I do want you to play a game, though. I want you to go in the comments, give me your list of Scream films, worst to best, best to worst. I don't care how you do it, just do it.
make your dreams come true. More than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds. And you know, you, you would think after two or three Scream movies, just one killer would know how to run more than five feet without falling on his fucking face or getting kicked backwards down a flight of stairs. Just one is all I'm asking. It's like they all were trained at the Home Alone Academy for bad guys. Oh, marbles, yeah, you're gonna wanna just run on those and slip and fall. Yep, if there's some broken glass, try to step on each individual piece. And if there's a rusty nail, make sure you go for that. <laughs>